All right, all right, everybody. It's 757. It's almost that time. So <clears throat> you know what to do, what I want everybody to do. Um, as people come in, and I'm gonna give you time to come in, we're gonna share um this video on your page so everyone can see it. I'm gonna share it on mine so people can see what's on mine. I'm gonna share it to our ministry page, Kane Relationships. We are live. Got a great interview for you guys tonight. We're going to have some fun as always. So you guys just come on in. I see you, Terry. What's up, man? Come on in the room. Y'all is my theme, my theme song. My son said I'm not singing wrong, but um, he's supposed to say, I'm supposed to say, Jesus loved me. This I know. <laughs> so... <clears throat> All right. One second. All right, guys, we got one minute, one minute, and we're going to get started. Oh man, the weather is changing. Fall is almost here. It is. Guys, if I get distracted and look this way, it's because my beautiful wife is in the room. Shatabo. Katado. Mmm. All right. See, we got some people joining. Guys, when you come in, just, just say what's up. Let me know where you're watching from or just say, hey, let me know you're here. We're going to get rolling in 60. Ah, it's that time, guys. What's up, everybody? It's 8 o'clock. It's time for another Father's Authority where we exist to change the narrative on fatherhood and get fathers back into the lives of their children. Guys, we have a great interview for you tonight. As always, we have my friend, my brother, longtime friend and brother, um, Jimmy Whitaker. Um, Jimmy is father of a good friend of mine, and I've seen the impact of his fatherhood on his children. Um, and we're going to talk all things fatherhood tonight. We're going to bring Jimmy in. So just keep, keep on coming in. It's nice. Let us know you're here, and here he is, Mr. Jimmy Whitaker. Jimmy, how you doing, man? Man, I'm doing good, bro. That's good. Glad to be here. Thank you. Glad to have you. Glad to have you guys, Jimmy. Um, he He's a father. He's a writer. He's a singer, a uh, producer. <laughs> I've seen her music. He's helped written before and things like that, um, but I've, Jimmy is someone who's had an impact on my fatherhood as well as, as my life. He's been a um, friend to me. He's been a brother to me. I've watched him. Um, I've had conversations with him, but particularly I've watched him raise his children. Um, his son is a very good friend of mine. His daughter is a friend of mine as well, but I've seen the impact and how successful they are and how they relate their success back to their fathers. You can always tell um, how good a father is when his children can relate um, where they are in life back to of the impact of the father. So Jimmy, how you doing, man? Man, I'm doing good, bro. I'm glad to be here, man. Thank you. We're glad to have you. So tell us a little bit about yourself. What is it? I'm a father of two, uh, one son, one one daughter, a grandfather of one grandson, one granddaughter, and one on the way. <laughs> Let me see. I did some time in the Navy. Um, did about four and a half years in the Navy, got out because I wanted to be a good father. Okay. You know, I don't know if you want me to get into that part, but when I when my when I was growing up, my father was in the Navy. And back then they would go for nine months, 12 months, you know. So I didn't understand until I got older that when I joined the Navy that when Uncle Sam say go, 
you don't have a choice. You got to go. <laughs> right. You know, so coming up, I kind of, I want to say, resented my father not being there because I think I got into a lot of stuff that I wouldn't have if he was there, but I didn't understand he didn't have a choice, you know. Gotcha. So when I joined the Navy and I found out when Uncle Sam said, you got to go, it ain't no debate, man. <laughs> and that's how he put food on the table and that's how he provided for it. So when I got older, I respected him a lot more, you know, because I never went hungry. I never, you know what I'm saying, had clothes, had a roof over our head, you know, and that's how he provided for us, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, tell, tell us about your life growing up with your father. My father was great, man. He was a, a man's man. He, you know, he was there, you know, when, when he was home, he was there, you know, uh, in every aspect of the way he, he made sure his, his thing was he used to wake us up every Saturday morning. We lived in Pensacola, Florida at the time. And he would wake us up every Saturday morning to go fishing. Okay. Whether we wanted to or not, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe that's why I don't like seafood to this day because <laughs> I wanted to just watch cartoons. And he was like, nope, get up, grab them crab pots and grab them fishing poles. But that was his way of spending spending time with us, man. You know, and now that he's older, I really appreciate it sometimes, you know, and even even now, you know. So it was it was his way of saying, hey, I'm here. Let me spend time with my boys. And it was really important that he showed us that, you know, that time that he did have because it really impacted us. But I didn't realize till I got older how it impacted me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. How 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 did it impact you? Well, uh, the the I think where he was lacking, I wanted to make sure I didn't lack. Like I remember when my son was born, I got to see him for a month, then I went out to sea for six months. So when I got back, he didn't know me. Wow. You know, I went to grab him and he was like, you know, pulling away. And I was saying like, nah, nah, you know, that, that was the, one of the deciding factors for me getting out of the military. I wanted to be there to watch my kids grow up. Okay. It, it was a lot of things that I got into as far as street wise that I probably wouldn't have if my father would have been there all the time, okay. but I didn't understand, you know, the whole, that's his way of providing and Uncle Sam, when he say go, you don't have a choice, you know. Right. But it's a lot of things that I got into that if my father would have been there. Now, I had a tough mom. She didn't play, but she couldn't watch us all the time. Me and my brother, Jonathan, we ran the streets, you know. Okay. So when my son was born, I was more determined to be there, you know. And that was one of the decisions that made me get out of the Navy because I wanted, I didn't want nobody outside of me teaching him what being a man was. Mm, that's good. So that was one of the deciding factors for me getting out of the military was I wanted to be there to watch him grow up. So I was there when he first started playing basketball. I was there when he first started playing football. I was there, you know, to teach him a lot of things that, because of the military, my father wasn't able to teach me. You know. Okay. Man, Jeff played football. Jeff played football. Okay. Jeff played basketball, but his passion was basketball. Yeah, I remember that. Jeff yeah. played soccer. You know, I had him in everything, bro. <laughs> so, so tell us how your 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 relationship with your father and your fathering life impacted and influenced your fathering, how you fathered your kids. You know, my, my, my father taught me, first of all, to be, be a provider and to work. And it's, and it's ironic now that he's older, he tells me I work too much. <laughs> yeah, but you created this monster, man. You told me I can't accomplish anything with, in life without working. Now you tell me I work too much, you know, and I laugh. I say, you created this monster. But I instill those same values, you know, in, in my son. 
I said, because even with my grandson, you know, people say, you always got your grandson with you. Yeah, I got to teach him how to be a man because one day he's going to be somebody's husband. Yeah. yeah. And, and if, if, if he don't want to work, that's a reflection of me. You know, uh -huh. you know, my, my daughter was joking me today talking about, you know, my grandson always grabbing tools and always grabbing stuff, trying to fix stuff. I say, yeah, he's going to be a great husband. His wife ain't got to call somebody outside to come fix it. <laughs> you know, he'll be able to do it, you know. Right. And that that's that's that, to me that that's good because that helps the uh especially our boys that helps them to grow up and be able to do that. I didn't have that when I was coming up so I didn't know how to fix things and uh repair things around the house, you know, mm -hmm. business wise, counting money, all this stuff, you know. Yeah. My father, yeah. My godfather taught me all that, but I never learned the mechanics like working on cars and yeah. like that. So like now, and I and I laugh at her, um, but my wife, she won't let me work on things mm -hmm. <laughs> or, or or like on the car. She'd be like, no, take it to the shop, or we'll call somebody. There were some things like little things, minor things, maybe, but a lot of times like it's like, no, call um, let's call, let's call the repair person, call the maintenance yeah. guy or something like that, because I, I didn't get to learn that stuff. So yeah. It would be trial and error with me trying yeah. to work things yeah. out when now is not the time for trial and error. But now with you doing that with, with your grandson and you're showing him these things now, now it can be trial and error with him. Whereas a young person, he can learn that by the time he gets older, yeah, he have it down. Yeah. Back. And that's what every yeah. other thing in life. Oh, yeah, man. Everything I do, he's right there. You know, no matter what I'm working on, he's right there and he, he wants to do it. I had to fix some siding on the side of my house and I had to climb about 20 feet up in the air. And when I came down, he wanted to climb up. I said, go ahead. You know, I, I don't want him to be scared of, you know, anything. You know, I want him to be fearless, man. You know, got you. Yeah. yeah I saw a picture on Facebook. We had a chainsaw in his hand. Uh, yeah. Was that a real chainsaw? It was a real chainsaw. <laughs> yeah. We were cutting down branches. <laughs> and well, so I let him, he wanted to cut them down. I let him cut them down. Yeah, of course man. I was right there, you know. But yeah, and that's know. good, man. That um, my boys, I was in a barber shop this week, me and my son, and we was talking. About, I was telling the guys how I want to start your traditions with him and take him fishing, stuff like that. And one of the barbers, he's an avid hunter and a fisherman, and we was talking about because he had went to go to set up his uh his his houses for deer hunting or something like that, whatever right. he did. And so I asked him how to go. He said, man, it's great. He said, man, my father, I was learning, I knew how to shoot a 22 or was 22 or a shotgun at six. And I was like, wow. He said, my father told me that, but what happened was he said, I never wanted to go and play with the equipment, with the guns because my father showed me how it's supposed to be used and taught me what they were supposed to use for and what not to do. And I think that's good that you're doing that because when I saw the chainsaw, I thought about that and I say, well, I know Jimmy is teaching him the importance of that and when to use it and when not to use it. And that's what we have to do with our kids, yeah. with our sons, man, because if they don't grow up learning that stuff, they're going to try it on their own and then they're Absolutely. not going to the proper way to use it. Absolutely. Yeah. I, you know, I always wanted to be the biggest influence, you know, in my son's life and even in my grandson's life because the influence outside the house is is pulling on them constantly, man. Yeah. So you have to start that relationship when they're young, building that trust. Like, hey, my best interest is you. Mm -hmm. Outside that door, they might not have the same, you know, interest. Right. I'm steer you wrong. I'm not gonna let you get, you know, jammed up because. I live the life out there, so I know what's outside the door that's waiting for you, you know. Yeah, and I thought of, we man, my wife thought about that because right now Caleb goes to kindergarten next year. Mm -hmm. And it's just like I didn't know finding the right school was so stressful. Man. And, and hard and like so I knew it was important, but I didn't know how much work went into it because you gotta make sure, you know, he's found the right school. We're looking for a school with some diversity. Absolutely. The ratings are good, where he's going to learn, where it's not. We know it's going to be some influence, and we know it's our job 
to teach them the right influences. Yeah. But still, it's like, man, you got to think about it. Like, I go to one school and I'm like, how I grew up in the hood and things like that. And I'm like, I see some influences at school. And I'm like, nah, I know what that influence can do. Well, we're not going to do this school. You know, we got to go. And it's, it's hard, man. And um, just when you said that, I just thought about that because, you know, we got to, as fathers, we got to be yeah. the main influence in their lives. They're pulling on them every day, even even worse now, man. The, the things that we didn't get into until we were older, it's waiting for them at a young age, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah that, that's true, man. I didn't think about that. You're right. There is a lot of the things, like I said, we didn't sex and all this mm-hmm. stuff being introduced mm-hmm. to online, stuff like that. We were we were basically sheltered from that until we got to an old age. We come to oh, yeah, man. And like with my son with the games on his iPad, I had to look at the I have to look at the age range of the games now because some of those puzzle games he like puzzles. Some of those puzzle games, it's like twelve years old, but then we looked and it was a game where a guy was shooting people in the head and blood gushing out. We like son, not he knows now if it doesn't say four years old. He can't download. But then my wife was on four-year-old games, and it had, like, a sniper game advertisement on it. We're like, what in the world is going on, man? And people, they get that money, so they're they're trying to reach these kids at this young age and this influence how they're thinking and stuff like that. But I like that we got to be the biggest influence in their lives. So what does fatherhood mean to you? Man, Fatherhood means everything to me, you know, I because I understand the, the role that we play. I, I'll give you an example, man. When I was younger, I, I, I got in trouble. I was in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people. And um, <laughs> we, got, we got in trouble with the police. And the, um, the policeman said... Um, I need your father's number so I can call him. And I said, no, sir. (laughs) He said, do you want to go home? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, I need your father's number. I said, no, sir. And he said, why? I said, because my father's going to come here. He's going to beat me in front of my friends. And and they, they thought it was funny, but I was so serious, man. And they kept asking me. And I kept saying, no. They say, so you're you're willing to stay here rather than us call your father. I say, yeah. (laughs) And and eventually they let me go, but I knew my father had a standard. And I knew even with my son, even with my grandson, I say, listen, I don't care what the other boys do. I don't care what they, this is the standard that I expect from you, man, you know? I wanted him to be more afraid of what I would do or what I would think versus his friends. Right. Because if if they're more in, influential outside of the house than you are inside of the house, you're going to be in trouble, man. Yeah, it's true. Fatherhood to, to be there in every aspect of his life. My son is 33 now, and it's still things that he'll call me and ask me about. You know, I remember when, one time my mother was telling me something and I was like, mom, grown. And she was like, yeah, I don't care how grown you are. I'm still going to be your mother. And that always stuck with me. I don't care how grown our kids are and different levels of their life. They're going to need us. Right. Yeah. You know, some parents be like, OK, they grown. They on their own. No, we can't. We can't do that because at every level of their life, they're experiencing something new. So I need to be there like, okay, basketball, football. I was there then. High school, girls, peer pressure. I was there then. Now dating, marriage, babies. I'm there now. You know, finances, you know, like I think one of the the, the worst things we can do is not inform our kids about life. You know, when my son d- decided he was going to get married, First thing I told him to do, I said, you need to go get life insurance. Mm-hmm. He's like, life? Yeah, it's something should happen to you. Your wife and your kids will be taken care of. So if you don't, then 
You know, that's why you see them GoFundMe's and all like that. I say, if you get it young, this costs you less than if you wait to get old and try to get it. Yeah. And things like buy a house instead of renting. That's one of the things my father taught me. He said, when you're renting, you make somebody else rich. When you own, you make yourself rich, you know. And so just different things as far as being there and 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 even guiding him, you know, even spiritually sometimes, you know, you, you know, my son is a pastor, so he's, you know, he, he's on it. But even there's aspects of, you know, the the world aspect that he didn't deal with that I dealt with. So I can help him in a lot of areas. So I think for me, just being there in every aspect of his life, even my grandson, you know, I have sometimes grown man conversations with him, mm. you know, and, and my wife would look like, ain't he a little bit too young? I said, no, because the world is more advanced now. Yeah. You know, he's eight years old and kids eight years, eight years old, they have a mind of a teenager now because yeah. all the things that are, are accessible to them. So I have to start now having conversations with him at eight that I didn't have to with his uncle until he was 12 and 13, mm. you know? Yeah. yeah. And I don't, you know, spiritually, but, you know, financially, we have to teach them, man, you know, it's, it's important, you know, entrepreneurship, you know, having your own being, sometimes it's, it's good to go against the grain. Yeah. You know, don't, you know, I remember Jeff was trying to get a hairstyle like everybody else one time when he was younger. And I say, listen, you ain't got to believe me now, but the clean cut guy is going to win every time. I say, when you go to these interviews, they're looking for a certain type of image for their company. You can't be with every fad and every style and wonder why you didn't get the job. Mm -hmm. so your, your presentation is everything, you know, so... Yeah, that's good, man. That's good. And it's funny you said that because like my conversations with Caleb now is like me almost almost like me having a conversation with an eight-year-old. Mm -hmm. He's four because then mm -hmm. he said, Well, daddy, actually, if you do it like this, I'm like, where'd you learn that word from? How'd you learn how'd you learn how to use that in a proper way? Oh yeah. Oh and, yeah. You're you're absolutely right, man. It's They're, like, they're so advanced, Nate, that it's, it's crazy. It's almost yeah. scary. Yeah. yeah. Just what they're talking about, what they're, what they're watching. And listen, we were listening. He has iPad in the car today. And there was a song that came on um, on one of the uh, on one of his games. It was mm -hmm. like an R&B song. And he back there singing it, words, rhythm, and everything. I was like, when did you learn that? And how did you learn that? So it's like I said, their, their, their minds are, are different, and um, they pick up quick, man. They're sponge, man. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny how they do that. But it's like you said, it's important that you know fatherhood is everything, everything in their lives. Like how you said that, as they get older, it's a not, something else that they're learning. Mm -hmm. Else that they're going to need that. Therefore, they may not be there for that for everything, but there's things they're going to need us for. And then with the wisdom, because things are basically almost the same. It's yeah. just cycling, but it's just on yeah. another level. But the yeah. wisdom that we have, that our fathers have, can still help in that area. Mm -hmm. You know, for that's good. So what's the best part of being a father? Watching watching them grow, man. Watch, watching the, the, the seeds that what what you planted in them, the good seed that you planted in them, watching them grow, man. You know, I'm enjoy watching my son be a father, you know, and watching things that I instilled in him. Now he's instilling in his kids, mm -hmm. you, you know. And um, man, it's, it's it's a beautiful thing because the the older I get, the more I I appreciate life, and I, I and I sit back. You know, because when you're young and you got kids, you're moving. You're trying to teach them this. You're trying to make sure you got this. You got that. Now that I'm older, I sit back and I enjoy it more. Mm -hmm. You know, I enjoy the outings out 
you know, when my kids take me out on Father's Day and my birthday and stuff like that. So I'm 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 enjoying fatherhood now more now, knowing that I really believe that my son is okay. You know, I used to have a fear that, you know, if I passed before they got to the point where they could take care of themselves, would they be able to maintain? Now I know that, so I'm at peace, you okay. know. And so even with my grandson, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I instill things in him now that when I'm gone, he'll, he'll be able to hold on to and grasp, you know, Okay. You know, yeah. That's good. That's good. And uh, that is good. It's, it's a joy to see them, uh, things you teach them, even at a young age. Like now, I love seeing things I tell Caleb. Um, come on. You know, one of the things I tell him all the time that he's a Holloway. His name means something. And that his name means greatness. Yeah. And when things happen, you do that because you're a Holloway. This is because you're a Holloway. And one day, Sunday, I told him, I said, man, you're very handsome, man. Because I was a little bow tie. I said, you know what? So that's because you're a Holloway. <laughs> very handsome. So we were in the grocery store. And um, one of the ladies told him, said, you're very handsome. He said, thank you. Then we walked up. He said, dad, it's because I'm a Holloway. That's right. That's right, buddy. He, he, you're already planting that seed in him. Yeah. yeah he you knows. Know, he, he has a certain standard now because this is the way the Holloway men do. You know? Uh -huh. Yeah. And that's going to follow him, you know? Yes, and I, and I, and that made me feel good. It, it really, I, I, I had to poke my chest out because he was like, "Daddy, it's because I'm a Holloway." And he was just right, went right back to his iPad and started doing what he was doing. But to see that come back to me, it felt good. Um, so, how important are father's words to his child? Very important. You know, I, I come from an era where, you know, your word was your bond, man. You know, and and I don't, I don't say one thing and and do another. One one thing my son will tell you, I've never sugarcoated anything. You know, because I'm, I'll give you a prime example. When I was growing up, you know, I'm a church kid. I'm a PK. You know, so my father, when he was talking to me about sex. He told me, he said, yes, yeah, son, one night of pleasure can mean a lifetime of misery. Okay. What else? <laughs> you know, <sighs> is, is that it? <laughs> Pretty much watch, it, you know, and I'm like, oh, man. So with my son, I couldn't leave him there to guess. You, you know right. what I mean? So I would sit down and tell them, like, look, bro, this is how it is. You know, I know what the church says. Mm -hmm. You know, I know what the Bible says. But let me tell you what your hormones say. Yeah. When, when, when you in that room with that young lady and she's smelling good. Let me tell you what your hormones say. Mm -hmm. you know? And I used to <laughs> I used to always tell him, I said, let me tell you something. If you get somebody pregnant, I'm going to punch you in your face. <laughs> and he used to be like dad why are you gonna punch me in my face i said because you knew when you left to go over there that there was a chance that you might be in a situation that something may happen mm -hmm. you know come on nate you know we well oh, yeah. yeah we know i, we I, said, I, know, what will happen. I know what the church says but let me tell you this I rather for you to protect yourself, and 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 then to do that, and now you got a baby that you're not ready to support, you know. Yeah. So I, I've never sugarcoated anything, man. You know, and I I know some church people are like you told him to protect this. Yes, I told my son to protect himself. Right, because you rather do that than to have them uh, go out there and not. You know, you rather have yeah. no because because you like you said we grew up. You grew up in the church. My my biological father wasn't a pastor. When the, my godfather who raised me was a pastor. So I'm basically, I'm I'm a, I'm a PK by default. Mm -hmm. so, you know, we grew up in church, and because the church told us they sugarcoated, we went out there on our own 
and did it anyway because we wanted to know what it was like and what to do and because it wasn't like okay this is what's gonna happen yeah or, or okay if you're gonna do it protect yourself yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but if you're gonna do it protect yourself. we wasn't told we were just told like the bible said you can't do it we weren't told why you can't do it or mm -hmm. what reason so we went mm -hmm. out there and found out on our own yeah man and, and then you know you had the dudes outside of church telling you your your street friends and what they're a little bit of knowledge trying to give you right real life making decisions man and a lot of people got caught up man and you know and so i didn't want my son to, to you know to be out there just got a whole bunch of babies everywhere because nobody sat him down and and, and told him about that young lady with a set of skills that'll mess his mind up <laughs> right yeah true you gotta be real yeah man real about it yeah, yeah. I, I i never sugarcoated anything because i didn't want him to be out there just not knowing bro you yeah. know so if he did then that's that's on him you know even to the point that i had to tell him and my daughter about um generational curses i believe that plagued our family you know i sat them down and told them i said listen alcoholism and drug abuse plagues our family it's something in our dna makeup that we love our family love drugs and alcohol i got it on my mother's side and my father's side so if you go out there and you decide to do that there's a good chance that you may get addicted to that and a lot of times people don't inform their kids of things they think you know the generational curses that they believe that plague their family and you you really leave them out there vulnerable man and so i didn't want to yeah yeah, yeah. and that's one of the things that, that as fathers and as parents too and and, and and the church a lot of times we we try to sugarcoat things with our kids because we don't want to uh them we scared that if we tell them they're going to go out there and do it Oh, we don't want to speak that over their lives, but I said, I said that everything, all the generational stuff that happened with my father, my grandfather, his father, my mother's father, anybody's father, that that would that was negative ended with me. Mm -hmm. My son starts a new generation of Holloway men that are going to be successful, of men that are going to take care of their children, men that are going to take care of their wives, of men that are going to respect women and. Those things that are going to be successful because, you know, and I like how you said you sat down with them and told them about the things, the generational curses that plague your family. Um, that's one of the things that uh, I never thought about talking to my son with. But as he gets older, I will. I think you think your screen is stuck. Oh, there you go. Um, so just like and I look at that and things that in my family line that that plagued me that that caused me like not to be where i should be mm -hmm. things like that and not because i couldn't have got out but a lot of things i did mm -hmm. overcome but it took me as i got older to but to save my son from having to deal with that absolutely I with me absolutely uh, and i think we do our our kids an injustice when we don't inform them of things we think that may plague them from Things that happen down our generational lines, man. So it's so important for us to listen. I, I need to give them every advantage to win as possible. Yeah. I, I have to give them the cheat sheet. You know, you know how when we was in school, somebody took the test before the class and they had all the answers. So they gave you the answer. So when you walked in there, you was like, oh, I'm an ace this. Uh-huh. It's the same thing I believe in life. I'm I'm trying to give my kids the cheat sheet so they don't fall and, and fail that they can be on the winning part of life versus dealing with a whole bunch of adversities that they didn't fell into because of things that plagued my family line you know that's good that's good and that that that, that is true we have we have to do that we have to do that as fathers and that sets them up for success and it keeps them mm -hmm. going throughout their lives because every time they go as they get older they think about what my daddy said what my dad said and then you can look at your kids and being a new father i'm watching this and i'm watching how you can see pieces of characteristics of family members 
in your child from down the line. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm just like, you know, because uh, we're looking at my son. My son is stubborn. And we look at, okay, that comes from your side of the family. <laughs> my, my great uncle is is was stubborn. Mm-hmm. At, you know, my I got two brothers and sisters that are stubborn as oxes. Mm-hmm. You know, so we're like, okay, so so that 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 tendency is in there. So we gotta um we gotta work on that. We got okay, we gotta fix that. We gotta look, okay, stubborn, stubbornness is good sometimes, but not when it's against your parents and not in a negative way. So you can look at your children and see traits from down your family line. I like how you said that because I, I understand it now. You see traits from down the family line mm-hmm. in your child that you were like, wow, you never thought that you would see that. Man, I'm going to tell you something funny. I had to call my son one time and I had to apologize to him because when we were coming up, if we cried, my father would be like, look, stop that crying. Men don't cry. Men don't cry. You know, men don't cry. So what it created in me was an emotionalist monster, man. Mm. I didn't cry about nothing, bro. I ain't had no feelings towards nothing. Wow. And, and so when my son was coming up, the same thing my father taught me, I was doing to him. Oh, wow. Hey, bro, don't cry. Hey, bro, what y'all like crying for, bro? Hey, we don't do that. Men don't cry. And what you do, you're, you're creating an emotionalist monster, man. You know, it took me a long time. Man, let me tell you something. I would go to church and people would be crying because they feel the, the, the power of God. And I couldn't even let myself be vulnerable mm. to feel that because I had that men don't cry. You know, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Well, I had all this built up stuff in. And I actually had to pray. I say, okay, God, you got to take this away from me, you know, because I can't even enjoy your presence because it's times I may want to cry, but that men don't cry thing is built up in me Mm. that wouldn't allow me. So when I prayed about it, once God released that thing off me, man, now I cried everything. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't got too soft, Nate. I cried everything. Graduations, birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it, it like you said, that 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 if we look at it, that's plaguing men everywhere, especially in, in church with their relationship with God. Because when you when you have a relationship with God, you have to be vulnerable. You have to open your heart to God. You have to, and God's presence will will make you feel emotional. And even mm-hmm. kids. Fathers will be emotionless with their kids. So what happened is the father is there, but he's not there. Right. Your son, right. your son may need you to be vulnerable and emotional at that moment. But then because you're so hard, he don't know how to feel. Because if you come in and say, Dad, she hurt my feelings. She broke up with me. I'm hurt. You mm-hmm. know, you, you don't want to just tell him, oh, man, get over it. No, mm-hmm. Then that's going to make him hard towards women. And he's gonna, That's when you become a player. Mm-hmm. So you want to let him know, okay, I understand how you feel, son. Go ahead, let it out. Get it out. Here's your opportunity. Get it out now. Now that you got it out, now let's work on your strategies. But with men being like that, then they're not, they're not, mm-hmm. um, they, they become heartless to their children. And they don't really. Yeah, you don't, you don't know how to feel. You don't know how to relate. You're, you're, you're cold emotionally, man, because. Yeah. You've been told not to show that side of you. And, and that's what's wrong with this generation now of all of these thugs. You know, they've been taught you don't cry. So if you don't know how to feel for somebody else's loss, so it's nothing for you to take a life because you don't feel that part. You know, you have no emotions, you know. And right. Yeah. So you, I had to change the narrative, man. You know, that's good, man. That's good. Yeah. Man. We got to. That's that's when we got to, and that's what this, this whole a father's authority is about, man. Just change the narrative because conversation like this help other guys, other fathers. Maybe a father out there that may feel I'm not supposed to cry, or and mm-hmm. then this, and he says, "Okay, I can." Because it, so I sometimes I believe inside those fathers that are hard, they really want to let those feelings out. But like you said, you wanted to let it out, 
but that 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 mentality of men don't cry took over. Mm -hmm. And so they have to understand that I can let this out and I can be with. And then we have to teach um uh, the women have to understand too that if, that if your man does cry, that doesn't mean he's weak. Absolutely. You know, that, that's another part of it. And to any women that's watching, you gotta understand too. Because he 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 lets himself out. Because some of them may have father, they never saw cry. Mm -hmm. They never saw that stuff. So when the, when that man cries, like, oh, now you're weak, you know. But no, he's not weak. It uh, a, a, it takes a strong man to let his feelings out. But they have to understand too that just because he cries, it doesn't mean he's weak and that he's less of a man. Right. That means he's had feelings, you know. Right. You know, and that works on on her behalf too. Yeah. yeah. Because he won't be um, heartless toward her, absolutely. And, you know, and that's that's where abuse comes in. That's where right. you know, cheating right. comes in. Those things, and those things we have to work on. Uh, so let me ask you: What advice would you give your children about love? Cherish it. You you we, we you have to cherish it, man. Because love is one of those beautiful things meant to. Oh um, man, just overtake you. So when you, you know, I always tell my son this. When right before he 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 got married, I had a conversation with him. I said, um, let me tell you something, bro. You always gonna find somebody that may look better than your wife, maybe shape better than your wife, you know, may have a lot of things different than your wife, but you always gotta remember why you chose her and not those other ones. Mm -hmm. You know, and you don't never want, you know, to put yourself in a position where you make love hard, man. Yeah. You know, you know, people make love, loving them, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but man, love is an important key to any relationship, not only with your, your significant other, but with anybody, but it starts with God. You, you know, if you got a that's true a, a good relationship with God, then then because we know God is love, then it becomes easy for everything because everything trickles down. Mm -hmm. You know, so we need to show our look. Love starts at the home, man. Yep. The the reason why, and I go back to the way this world is. It's not a lot of love in the home, so they go outside the home looking for love. And sometimes the, the, the love that is shown outside the doors, it's a twisted kind of love. Yeah. It, it, it comes with rules and regulations and all kind of other things. But pure love starts at, at home, man. You know, I first knew love from my mother and my father. That's why it's so important. But even now, man, you know, my son and my daughter joke me. They say, I'm... The way I am with my grandkids, I wasn't that way with them. <laughs> my grandkids are special. They're different, you know, but I think we learn, you know. Yeah. Because when my son was born, I was 22. Man, I was still learning myself. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm growing as he was growing, you know. So a lot of mistakes I made when I was younger, now that I'm 55, bro, it's I'm a totally different person, you know, mm -hmm. and the the love that that I thought I had back then is a different type of love now that I know the real meaning of love. Yeah, you know, my my grandkids are benefiting from who I am now. Even my kids are because you know I'm a I'm a different person, man, and I really understand what. What the true meaning of love is and, and how to give it without looking for anything in return you know I, I think too many people attach love with some type of okay i love you but this is what i need you to do for me love doesn't have yeah. any relations love come on man love is just a gift man for god so loved the world that he gave you know love is a giving thing and once we understand that, then it becomes easy to, to love even your enemies, you know? Yeah. And that's what, like I said, love, love is giving because we have to give. So if, if I if I show love to you 
And because the Bible, you know, the Bible said, husband, husband loves your wives as Christ loved the church. It never said anything about wives love your husband. Yeah. It, never, it never told him to love us. It, it, it never did, which it, it happens. But when we show love to them, unconditional love, we get that back. It's a lot more we get back. When we love our mm-hmm. kids, we get a lot more back. So if I'm heartless to my son, I'm not going to get love back. I'm going to get disrespect back. I'm right. going to get consequences of him getting in trouble back. When I show him love and I give him love, even when I'm disciplining him, you know, and I and I tell him, you know, how much I love it and why mm-hmm. I'm doing this, why I got to do this, is I get that love back. And that's what we got. We got to do. We got to teach our children that love is 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 sacrificial. Love is like you said, love your enemies. Love is when you love your enemies, it's forgiving them even when they've done you wrong. You don't have to keep letting them do it, but you forgive them and you release it. And then now it's on them to do the same. But uh, that's that's love. Love is given. You're always giving in love. You're always giving constantly. And I think for me, it's better now because me understanding that emotionalist part of me, mm-hmm. I had rid of now I'm better with the love part. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because man, it, it was it was even hard for me to say I'm sorry, bro. Oh wow. Yeah, man, what? <laughs> because to say you're sorry means you're showing emotions. You know? Wow. It wasn't until you know God released that from me, man, that you know Sometimes it's still, you know, like when people do stuff, you know, you go, oh, okay. <laughs> right. That, that 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 old feeling comes back up sometimes, but, you know, we got to take it and we got to say, okay, you know, give yourself to me. You have that moment, but then, mm-hmm. you know, like, okay, you know what? Mm-hmm. I know what I'm supposed to do. I, I don't know if I want to do it, but I know what I got to do. But then when you do it, you feel better. Oh, yeah. yeah you, you feel better. About oh, yeah. It. Yeah. So, um, doing this last this last segment. So, Jimmy, what if you could say anything to fathers out there? Just take a moment. If you want to pray over fathers, you want to just give fathers a piece of advice, a couple of nuggets of advice. What would you say to fathers out there that would help them be successful? I would say this: take the opportunity that that God has given you to be a father. There, there's men out there who would love to be fathers, but life hasn't afforded them that opportunity. So if you have that opportunity, and I always say this, you only have a small window of time to impart in your kids because once they get to middle school, now it's even elementary. Mm-hmm. Once they get to middle school and high school, if you haven't really established that real foundation with your kids, they may be lost, man. You know, so we have to take that opportunity now while they're young to spend. Listen, even with even if you're not with the mother, you still can spend time, man. Because okay, yeah, y'all might not be getting along, but y'all have that one thing in common, that child. So for the sake of that child, man, especially if a man, if you have a son, it's important for him to be around you and to really have that relationship with you. You know, my my uh, my grandson went to Maryland this weekend. And his father lives in Maryland. And when he saw his father, he was so happy to see his father, you know? And I realized that even though he's here and, and I stand as his grandfather, I'm not his father. Mm-hmm. That's a different type of relationship. I have a father-like relationship. And even even sometimes when we're talking, he'll be like, he calls me dad or dad. He's like, Dad, you're my you're my my granddad, dad, but my real dad lives in Maryland. So he knows the difference. Yeah. So it's important for that his father to establish a relationship with him now before he gets to an age where he's gone. And now he has his own mindset and he might not have time with him because he didn't establish that relationship. So I say this, take every opportunity God gives you 
to impart in your kids' lives the, the right thing. And you're going to see the fruit of that when they get older. They're going to reciprocate it back to you. You know, now my kids take me out, you know, mm -hmm. they they buy me gifts. And, you know, even though I still have to get them money, but I, <laughs> they buy me gifts. They So I'm I'm. I'm receiving now from the things that I put in them yeah. you know? and to love them, man, is, is you need to be the biggest influence in their lives because what's waiting for them outside them doors, bruh, especially in, in this climate that we live in, man, we, we got to keep them close, man. All right. Yeah. You, you don't want, John boy outside the house to have more influence than you in, you know. Yeah. Like I said, there's certain things, man. I'm, I tell you something funny, Nate. I used to run with some some tough people, and we would do certain things. And because I was a church boy, when I got by myself, I would say, "Lord, forgive me." <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> but that, <laughs> that was instilled in me I, I still even though i I wanted to do things and i had influences outside the home but the biggest influence was inside the home i had enough sense to know what i did was wrong and to ask god to forgive me right you know? but that started with my father and my mother they, they they taught me that and so what it what it did was even when the scriptures say train up a child in the way he should go and when he get grown, he won't depart. Even though I did things, where am I at now, Nate? I'm 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 right back where I was intended to be. Yep, that's good. Yeah. And, so, and, go ahead. No, so um, in his last ten minutes, I'm glad you said something because if I remember, if I'm correct, for 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 a big span of Jeff and J Javier's life, you were a single dad, right? Mm -hmm. So I've been having some guys that are single dad ask me. Um, to have a single dad on. I know you're married now, mm -hmm. but in the next few minutes, can you give some advice to the single dads that may be watching? Yeah. First thing you have to do is you have to put your kids first. Don't put anybody else before them, you know, because they need that time, man. They, they need that you and them time. You know, every year, what I would do, my father had a timeshare in Orlando and I would take my income tax money and we would go to Disney World every year. You know, that was that was our thing and, and they loved that. And, you know, and then me and my son was talking about that. And he said, thank you. Thank you for that. You know, you know, showing us those things, took them on their first airplane and, you know, so you can do things if you plan it. You know, you might not have all the money right now, but if you plan it, you can do little things with your kids. And and it's it's so important that you establish that relationship now and put them first. You know, the girls gonna come. You know, the 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 other relationships gonna come, but the most important relationship is there in the house with you. Mm -hmm. You know, I was so determined not to um, have them feel second, like they were second, you okay. know, because, you know, of the situation that me and their mom had went through, you know, they were already feeling a certain type of way. So it was so important for me to make them feel number one. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't, you don't want them if, if you're a single dad and you got, especially if you got custody of your kids, you don't want them to feel like they're, they're a second fiddle to anything. You know, that's going to help with their schoolwork. That's going to help with their relationships outside of the home and everything. Cause they know that you have their back and there's nothing that you wouldn't do for their success because they know that they come first, you, you know? Yeah. And for me, that was the biggest thing to give them the best life because, you know, man, I had already lived a good life, you know, so it was important for them. A lot of people don't understand the childhood that a child has 
will determine most of the time their adulthood. Okay. You know, so if most people, if most children come from a messed up childhood, a lot of times they're going to be messed up adults. True. Yeah. You know, so it's important for us to give them the best advantage to life possible. Even as a single father, you might not listen. My kids joke me to this day because they ate a lot of spaghetti. <laughs> they ate a lot of chicken. <laughs> they ate a lot of hot dogs. They ate a lot of cabbage. It was cheap, but they ate everything. Mm -hmm. you know, I made sure they ate, you know, and, 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 and kids really don't require much as far as material things, your time is the best thing that you can give them, man. Yeah. You, you can't, once that time is gone, you can't recoup that. It's gone. Right. So you take every advantage that you can to show them that they're important, man. And that there's nothing that you're not willing to do to give them a good life, you know? Yeah. That's, good. That's and, good. That's good. Yeah. Okay. I would say this too. Make sure that they're rounded, well-rounded, even spiritually. You know, even if I tell you something, my 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 wife told me, and I know we're getting close. When my grandson was born, my my daughter wasn't really going to church at the time, and my wife was like, "It's our responsibility to make sure we take him to church." And I was like, "Yo, that ain't my baby," <laughs> you know. But she said it's our responsibility as grandparents to make sure he's brought up in a God fearing, you know, way until my daughter. Now, my daughter's back in church and she makes sure he's, but, and I, and I listened to her and we started carrying him to church. And man, he's a church kid, you know, and I'm just telling my daughter. Um, this coming Friday, he's starting piano lessons, and I'm trying to give him every advantage, man. Yeah, I mean, that's good, man. That's good, and I, I'm glad I, I thought about that as you were talking. I remember uh, I had guys ask me to have some single fathers, and I know you're not single anymore, but as you were talking, I thought about that, and that's the most that's that's really the times where I saw the impact of your fatherhood on Jeff and Javier because you were a single dad. And I saw you were always there for them. You made sure I, I heard things you would tell Jeff, and Jeff would tell us things you you would tell him. <laughs> and, um, I remember when he when he got when he got his first car. Uh, I remember those things things you tell him about the car and things like that. It was that, that blue tars. I remember yeah, that. man. <laughs> yeah. You know, I I had to make sure he understood. I, I you know, by him being black, man, you're already a target. So I would tell him, listen. You might have you and a friend in the car, but you can't be riding with a bunch of guys, man, because nope. you make yourself a target. You could be on your way to Bible study, but the police, only thing he sees is four black males in a car, five black males in a car. Y'all are up to no good, you know? And so it's just things that I wanted him to be aware of that my dad didn't make me aware of, you know yeah. what I mean? And for that, and for that, Jeff would never have a bunch of people in that car. I'd never see a bunch of people in the car. Most I've seen is like maybe two or three people. I know I've ridden in it a few times, but and to this day, I'd never see a whole bunch of people. Yeah, right, riding with Jeff. So that was that was so good advice, man. Jim, I appreciate you for coming on tonight. Man, thank um, you for having me, bro. Great advice. I'm definitely gonna have you on again um, down the road. So just hang tight. I'm gonna be back with you in a second. Okay. Okay. Well, guys, that was a great interview tonight. Um, my friend and brother, um, James Whitaker, um, just take the advice. Remember, be, be real with your kids. Um, they don't, uh, I one thing he said, they don't require much, many things material, but your time is most important. So again, next week, we're going to be back with a great interview. Guys, I got some single dads coming on um, in the next few weeks. Um Appreciate you guys. Again, as always, be victorious. Love your kids. And I will see you guys next week. Love you.